Hi guys, it's Carissa, and I'm really excited because I am starting a new Christmas tradition, hopefully it goes well, um, to do an advent calendar of books with my daughter. She will be two on December 30th, and even though she's not quite as into books yet as I was hoping she'd be by this age, I definitely see a pattern in the things that she likes and the things she responds well to. So I made purchases based off of that. I also made a couple of purchases that I think will hopefully help transition her into regular books in the future, um, even if she doesn't care for them just yet. So I don't have them all with me. In an effort to cut down the cost on this, I made a few choices. One is to only do 12 books instead of a full 24. Um, I feel like in order to do it inexpensively, I'd have to start planning a lot earlier, maybe in the summer. Um, to get books at a decent price, I was shopping on Thrift Books and eBay. Uh, the problem is, to get a book, I was averaging about $3 a book, which is great with free shipping, but it takes like three weeks for these books to arrive. What I've been doing is compiling a list in my phone of the books that I would like to get and kind of shopping around. Keep in mind, sometimes it is cheaper to buy them brand new on Amazon, but I was trying to be a little bit eco-friendly, and um, but there's a downside to that for sure. I'll show you here. The first book that I purchased is one that I didn't even know existed, but I saw it when we were at the library one day in the children's section, and the illustration really appealed to me, and I found out that it was Joyce Wan, and she made Vera's very favorite book of all time, You Are My Cupcake. Um, it's well-loved. <laughs> she has always loved this book. The problem is um, I did buy this used, so I, maybe I didn't read the listing well enough, but I thought it said that it was in decent condition. And the last page, which is supposed to be like a surprise fold out flap, is missing about a quarter of the flap. So, well, half the flap, a quarter of the last image. So that's a bummer. And spoiler alert, that was the end of the book. <laughs> um, but this looks really cute. And I don't know, maybe I'll cut that one part of the flap off, I guess. Uh, I do have another Joyce Wan book here. This is My Lucky Little Dragon. She has a whole bunch of these books because they're inexpensive, even brand new. They're only about $6. Um, they're inexpensive. They're really cute. So she's been gifted a lot of them. I've purchased her a lot of them. Um, none she has loved as much as this. One thing that is a downside to the newer versions of these Joyce Wan books is that the illustrations are not embossed any longer. So you can see there's an embossing on this book and it just adds a nice extra sensory element. She likes to feel the page and see what parts of the page had raised um, sections to touch and they don't do that anymore. So this book doesn't have that, but it does have a mirror on the last flap. Look at me spoiling all these books for you. This is used in not perfect condition, but I think this will help us transition into regular books is Llama Llama Red Pajama. She was actually given two Llama Llama books, hand-me-down books from her cousins. One is the Valentine book and one is the Christmas. And she likes them okay. Uh, she really liked the Valentine book for a few weeks and then she got sick of it. Um, but I feel like this is a this is a staple. <laughs> then I have this, which was a staple of my childhood. Not only golden books, but Richard's scary books were a big deal in my family when I was a kid. I remember reading a lot of them at my grandmother's house. And this is the best little word book ever. And she really enjoys, I have one here to show you as an example. She really loves these pretty books. Um, it's Richard by Richard Pretty, P-R-I-D-D-Y. She really loves these. In fact, this one, she can go through every single page and identify every item on it. And I think it's just really good for her self-esteem. It makes her feel really good. And um, it's a very encouraging experience for her. So we have a ton of those books actually, and they just kind of recycle the same. It's a lot of the same pictures, but in a different order. So I thought maybe this would be a new way to, uh, to do that same kind of thing. Is you have all these items that are um, are labeled in the in the what am I trying to say in the illustration like this so I'm looking forward to that and if this is too old for her right now or she doesn't show interest now I will put this with her other books that um, 
if this is too old for her or she doesn't have any interest quite yet, I'll just put it with her other um, non-board book books for now. This one was a little bit selfish on my part because I saw it at a toy store when we were shopping once and I thought, that's a gorgeous book and I kind of need it. <laughs> um, so this is a story, it's actually a poem I believe that my mother used to read us when we were kids because she loved it, she always really loved it. And I believe the book that it was in when we were kids only had a couple of little scratchy illustrations and not, and not fully illustrated like this. There was like maybe two or three little pictures. So this makes this feel even more special to me. It is The Owl and the Pussycat. And it's beautiful and sort of whimsical and realistic at the same time. So I feel like it'll catch her attention, especially because there's a cat in it. She does love cats and dogs. And it's sort of, yeah, see it's very, um, appealing visually I think and it's a very cute little sweet little poem then I have these which guys I'm ashamed I'm ashamed to admit um, I've seen these books before I've seen them my grocery store sells them I've seen them in bookstores and I never even gave them a chance because I just well basically I judged them by their cover I judge these books straight up by their cover um, I didn't care for the colors or the illustrations and I just was like Meh, and didn't think anything of them. But these are fantastic books. They have such substance to them too. These are Todd Parr books and um, Meg from Smarty and Steve-O is a child educator and she has mentioned these in the past. I thought, well, I'm sure she knows what she's talking about. So I picked this up around Halloween at the store and read it and it really it really struck me as a beautiful thing not only is it interesting because of the illustration and there's a lot of little animals peppered into the pages so she likes to point out the animals on the on the different pictures but it it's very beautifully written as um, uh, how do I explain it the translation of real adult emotion um, that children have to learn about and understand emotions that they feel but don't understand and things just um, everyday things that you don't necessarily look at the same way because you're looking at them through adult eyes but they're translated so well into something that a child can understand without dumbing it down um, it's very cute it's very simple but it has a lot of meaning and heart and I just I love these books. So this is one that she already has and I ordered two for her advent calendar. This one I have called The Feelings Book. I did buy this used also, but this came in very good condition. And as we all know, toddlers experience a lot of feelings and don't fully understand them. So this will be helpful. And the other is appealing directly to two things she loves right now, which is counting and dogs. It is, I think it's called Doggy Kisses One Two Three. So I'm eager to see that. I also purchased Corduroy. I got that on sale on Black Friday on Target's website. It's not here yet. And um, Happy Birthday Mouse, which is the mouse from the If You Give a Mouse a Cookie series. She has not read that book yet. I cannot find that in a board book. And that's from back when I was a kid. So I don't know if there's a reason they don't do it. Maybe it's too long. I know they have a whole bunch of other animals and food groups and things. If you give a pig a pancake and a moose a knuckle, stuff like that. So. If you buy it in a kit, um, I can I can get it that way in the future. But for now, she has something called The Best Mouse Cookie, which is a very short board book, but she seems to like it because it's about cookies and she likes to point out the mouse. It's a very, very short story. There's, there's like six pages, I think. So um, this is a book about the mouse's birthday and her birthday is just after Christmas. So it'll be kind of a nice thing to read about and talk about until then. Oh, and one other book, which was the last book I purchased used with free shipping, which is taking almost four weeks to arrive, is Harry the Dirty Dog. So that will be here someday. Um, so I don't have that to show you either. Now, part of the reason why I made such an effort to buy books um, used and at very reasonable prices is because I saw this and I really wanted to buy it, but I could only find it new and 
if you're not careful, you'll probably spend about $15 on this. If you want it badly enough, that's not that bad because it is a Mel Melissa and Doug product, but I happened to get it on Amazon for around $11 Amazon Prime, so that was free shipping. This is almost more of a toy than a book, so I'm bending the rules a little bit on this one. But this is the What Should I Wear removable doll dress-up book. Crinkling Lift the Flap dress-up cloth book. Now, this is something that she probably could have even had earlier than this. I think the age limit is a lot younger than I remember seeing somewhere that you can use this with infants. Um, but I still think she'll really enjoy this and appreciate it, and I don't think she's too old for it. And basically, it's just a little doll that you can pick up and slide into a different outfit on each page for a different scene and scenario. And I thought that was really, really sweet and special. And it's Melissa and Doug, so it's super cute and fancy. But that is it. I have one more book to pick out. The 12th book that I wanted to purchase, I'm so bummed out about. It was called Let's Find Momo. Um, and it's a really difficult book to find used because it turns out brand new, it falls apart on like the second time you read it even if you're the, just an adult holding it. Um, it sounds like it was really poorly made. Um, but it is a border collie, a black and white dog against multitude of different colorful backgrounds and with other identifiable objects on the pages. It sounds like it is something she would love and it looks really, really cute, but it's hard to justify spending $9 on that book when it looks like it just falls right apart. Um, I have, there's even pictures of it just like shredding open um, in the reviews. So now that you've seen sort of what my daughter likes or what I assume will appeal to her, I'd love to hear what your suggestions are for her 12th book, for her Christmas book advent calendar. I did not purposely do any Christmas books because she has a bunch of them and she doesn't care for them. Um, she has one that she sort of likes and the rest of them she just, she's, she has no interest. So maybe in the future we'll do Christmas themed books or specifically Christmas stories like The Night Before Christmas um, when she's a little older, if this goes well. So it's very exciting. Let me know if you've done it before, if you have any um, expert advice or suggestions for me or anything that you would like me to know. Otherwise, thanks for taking a second to hang out with me and talk about these books. And if I don't somehow talk to you before then, I hope you have a very happy holiday. All right, guys.